Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, have we found the bottom and are we now going to go higher and finally break into that one, oh, not one, sorry, two trillion dollar mark. We are getting very, very close. I think we're possibly at an all time high right now. Now, not for the price of Bitcoin, but for the market cap. I don't think we've been this high before. Let's have a look actually. What does it say? Yep, we are at an all-time high. Uh, no, actually, sorry, we're not. What was the all-time high? Let's go and have a look. We have been a little bit higher. So 1.886 and we're at 1.856. Still not too far, so that's not too bad. Getting very close though. And again, Bitcoin slowly creeping towards that 60K range. But look, we've been rejected from there a few times. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. We are already getting close to the next weekend. I mean, it's Thursday here in Australia, so traditionally we see a sell-off sort of starting sometime tonight, about Thursday night, through to sort of Monday for us here. So, again, it's roughly the same everywhere, just a day behind, depending on where you are. But look, there's a sea of green at the moment. Like, things are looking great, and we've got some really great stories there as well. BTC dominance, under 60%. ETH dominance at 11.4% and gas prices going through the roof. So people are obviously excited at the moment and they're jumping back into a whole stack of altcoins is what I think is going on. But it's hard to know exactly what's happening with the ETH fees. It could be a multi... Well, not could be. It would be a multitude of things. But I get the feeling that's most likely what's happening. It's people think that the bottom is in and now they've simply bought up that dip and then also starting to move into various altcoins. All right, let's have a look. What's pumped in the last 24 hours though? What's done really well? Filecoin, got a story about this and Kyber Network. Thank you, Kyber Network. <laughs> I've held onto this coin for so long. I haven't been able to use it because of the staking, because of the fees. But this is all to do with Kyber 3.0 and we'll have a look at a little bit had a story uh, in just a little bit on that, sorry. So doing quite well. Zillica doing quite well. Basic attention token. We'll talk about that as well. Phantom Cycoin, Decentraland, we'll talk about that. Loopring, Stacks, we're going to talk about that. Cardano, well, I've got the Coinbase Pro thing going on. A number of coins doing extremely well. And look, again, for me, anything from sort of 15% up. Neo, I wonder what's happened with Neo, but out of nowhere. So yeah, there we go. Great gains. What about losses though? Do we have many losses? Not really. There we go. Terra Luna, you know, down 4% but still up basically 70% for the week. Flow on the way down. Don't know too much about flow. And the rest of them, look, they're really, there's only a couple of losses there really. And otherwise we're talking about stable coins sort of moving around. No, I mean, not so much quantum, sorry, but you know, some of the coins further down, I thought that was stable coins, my bad, it's not. But engine, again, come down, but look, it had such a big pump. And again, if you've lost less than 1%, but you're still up 60% basically for the week, no one's complaining about that. So some really good losses, hardly, uh, sorry, some really good gains, <laughs> not losses, some really good gains there, and hardly any losses. So feeling like it's a little bit bullish, but again, we're already starting to lead in to the next weekend, and traditionally there is a sell-off over a weekend, but not every weekend. Is this going to be the weekend where it changes? I guess we're gonna find out. All right, let's have a look at the chart. So we did find a bottom here. This was the bottom down around kind of 52,000, or sorry, not quite there, 50 sort of 3,000. If anyone bought that, that was pretty good. But again, we still really need to see this finally break out. I think there's going to be a fair amount of resistance at 60,000. I mean, there already has been, you know, we got close to it here, rejected. We got just above it here, rejected. Uh, we got, you know, almost there, rejected. And now we're just coming back trying to test it again. If, you know, history kind of repeats itself, we probably will break 60,000 over the next couple of days. And I don't know how high it goes. Maybe it goes to sort of 63,000. I don't know. But I would say we're going to retrace and sort of come back down and retest this $60,000 level over the weekend at some stage. Probably break it maybe Friday, Saturday, and then come Sunday, uh, it falls back down and closes it again. And the CME gap. I know some people you know, think it's not really a thing and uh, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. And look, 
whether it's coincidence or not, most CME gaps get closed. That's just the way it is. Not all of them, though. There's definitely some that don't, but just a majority of them do. I think the last few, other than the weekend just gone, haven't closed for a while. But, yeah, again, the last one did. So, really, <laughs> based on history, the last time was the most recent time it closed it. So, we'll have to wait and see. All right, let's get on to the stories because there's tons of good stories all right, Grayscale launches five new crypto investment products as investor demand for cryptocurrency soars. So it's going up, these price fluctuations. Pry not, sorry, pry. Try not to get too caught up in them. This is just what markets do, and particularly crypto markets. They are super volatile. All right, Grayscale Investments has launched five new cryptocurrency investment products, which are now available for subscription by eligible individuals and uh, institutional accredited investors. So generally you gotta have a fair bit of money if you're buying through Grayscale. The new products that are, list are listed are Basic Attention Token, uh, Chainlink, Decentraland, Filecoin, uh, and Livepeer. And again, Decentraland had a bit of a gain and Filecoin had uh, quite some gain. And look, uh, Chainlink's finally listed there, has its own trust as well. So this is really bullish news for all of these products projects i don't know much about live peer coin i guess i'm gonna to have to go do some research but i hold Chainlink. Uh, i hold filecoin so i'm pretty happy with that and filecoin in particular has done quite well for me this week but also kyber network that may be one of my better performers in the last you know probably 24 48 hours but i'd have to go back and have a look i know both kyber network and filecoin have done extremely well though Right, this is interesting. So Visa anticipates cryptocurrency becoming extremely mainstream, working to allow Bitcoin use at 70 million stores. So Visa CEO uh, Al Kelly anticipates that cryptocurrency could become extremely mainstream within five years. I absolutely think it will too. And if not, definitely within the next 10, but I think five's more like it. He is working to position Visa in the middle of it should cryptocurrency take off. And, you know, finally, the big business has seen what's happening and they're getting on board. And the funny thing is, you know, I've been in the cryptocurrency space for a few years now. These guys are going to be considered the early movers, at least for the in institutions. I will be considered one of the uh, early adopters as well. And the funny thing is there's been there's people who've been in it for nearly 10 years longer than me. So... Yeah, there you go. Unless you're literally one of the crypto OGs from back in 2008. 2008. <laughs> 2008, sorry. I guess we can consider ourselves all early adopters at the moment. Uh, and yeah, I think Visa are making the right decision. So he further confirmed that Visa is working to allow Bitcoin purchases in addition to enabling the cryptocurrency to be used at 70 million stores where Visa is accepted. Now me, I won't be using my Bitcoin to sort of buy or sell anything. It will literally be a store of value. And I don't know if I'll ever sell any more of my Bitcoin. You know, that will all depend. I mean, if I see Bitcoin get above 300000 uh, or even close to the $300,000 mark at the peak of this sort of bull run, then I am going to sell a little bit. I won't sell a whole lot. I'm pretty comfortable with just simply holding on to the rest of my Bitcoin. Uh, I have some of it with BlockFi earning interest in Bitcoin and that. So, yeah, that's my plan. But, yeah, I wouldn't be using it to buy anything. I would literally be using it just as a store of wealth because it will just continue to go up. Will it have its bear periods? Yep, if you can just hold through based on history, and we can. that's all we can try to predict the future is based on what's previously happened, Bitcoin will go up by a reasonable amount more than whatever price you bought it if you give it at least you know four to five to ten years time you can't say that about all other assets that it will go up considerably some will some won't yeah anyway moving on next one so filecoin it gained 40 percent in 48 hours and so again a lot of that is the fact that grayscale has uh, listed them but so here, Phil, that's the name of the coin, the native token of the Filecoin uh, file ecosystem has rallied 40% in two days and catalyzed by two likely factors. So it's risen by more than 40% across uh, major exchanges, reaching its highest point since October. So it's been a little bit higher and a lot of it has to do um, 
with it getting listed by Grayscale. Now, the Winklevoss twins, they actually got into this uh, early, and so did Gemini. And I'd say that's possibly got a little bit to do with it as well. So Filecoin, again, about, you know, cl cloud storage and data and things like that. Um, similar kind of vein as the graph. I think the Filecoin will probably be... Uh, a little bit more important than the graph. Not that I don't think the graph is important, but it also costs a little bit more. I feel like uh, this is not going to be a bad coin at all to hold long term. But again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. I have some file, uh, not a lot. I should probably get some more, but I've got some other projects I'm sort of leaning more towards. But well done to the file uh, coin. Now, as, we, as I spoke earlier, so Kyber Network 3.0, it's almost here. So excitement for the upcoming release of Kyber 3.0 is helping to boost KNC price by 40% as new governance features and lower Ethereum fees excite investors. What I like about Kyber Network, or what I liked, I haven't been able to do it for a very long time now, is when I staked my Kyber Network, they pay in Ethereum. So it's actually Ethereum that you're getting back, not Kyber Network or something else. Now if you're Ethereum... Uh, focused uh, or an Ethereum fan that's pretty good if you're not then it really won't help you but that's what I really liked but unfortunately the fees were just absolutely killing me I was basically making nothing I was losing Ethereum trying to claim my Ethereum so 3.0 looking forward to it as they are moving to uh, optimistic roll-ups and things like that now the main driving force behind the growing optimism in the Kyber community is the upcoming launch of Kyber 3.0 which will tradition transition transition Kyber from a single protocol into a high into a hub of purpose driven liquidity protocols that are created to uh, different DeFi use cases. The launch will be implemented in two phases, which are dubbed uh, Katana and, Ka and Kaizen. The Katana phase is planned for Q1 and Q2 of 2021, so we're currently going through that now, and includes the launch of the Kyber Dynamic Market Maker or the DMM. A first for the young DeFi sector, along with a proposal for a Kyber DAO and KNC upgrade. Now, the Kazen phase will help integrate all the pieces of the Kyber e ecosystem together to finalise Kyber 3.0 and is expected to be completed by late quarter 3. So that's not too far away either. So I am super bullish on Kyber Network. I have been kind of the whole time except for the fees. That's what really sort of hurt it. Uh, I love everything that they're doing. You know, they haven't moved away from their business plan they have actually you know continued to develop it it's just the fees that were really sort of hurting so once the scaling stuff can sort of be sorted out i think kyber network's going to do extremely well it's probably been my worst performing and i don't mean it performed bad but it's just been my worst performing DeFi project so far uh, i think it is hyper undervalued let me say that again i think it's hyper undervalued it really has struggled and i think this 3.0 uh, and optimistic roll-ups and things like that is going to push this price much higher and i may actually buy some more kyber network because it's still kind of cheap even though it's up 40 percent all right morgan stanley so introduces bitcoin investing for millionaire clients all right, institutional banking powerhouse Morgan Stanley seems to have given Bitcoin its nod of approval, finally. Based on fresh, fresh intel via an internal memo as reported on by CNBC, Morgan Stanley will give clients access to Bitcoin investing through only un, although only under specific conditions. So you've basically got to have a fair amount of cash. So participants in Morgan Stanley's Wealth Management Wing can gain access to Bitcoin through Galaxy Digital's Bitcoin Fund LP and Institutional Bitcoin Fund LP, as well as uh, FS Investments, FS NY Dig Select Fund. Although the allocation is capped at 2.5% of uh, each client's overall wealth. So they're happy for them to invest in it, but they're not letting them you know, invest too much in it. And my guess is because Morgan Stanley are going to be buying the absolute crap out of it, and they don't want their wealthy investors to be ahead of them. Hence why they're restricting them to 2.5% of their overall wealth, while I'm sure Morgan Stanley itself is probably buying up Bitcoin. Now, clients must also carry accredited investor status, so they need to hold capital at Morgan Stanley valuing $2 million or more and maintain a certain account history. That minimum raises to $5 million for investment firm clientele. Each fund also comes with minimum investment conditions. So there you go. 
Morgan Stanley finally flipped the switch and now they're into Bitcoin. And this is going to follow. All other banks are going to follow suit. It just takes that one or, you know, two first movers. And again, you know, Michael Saylor with MicroStrategy and Tesla. And now it will. It'll be trickle, trickle at first. And then it's just going to be flood. They're all going to come in. Now, speaking of Tesla, Tesla's unrealized profit from holding Bitcoin could be the equivalent of upscaling the company's daily car sales by over 860 percent so i mean tesla you know they're all about the cars and that's where they're making their money seems like their bitcoin holdings may have you know done quite well and a whole lot more than you know the car manufacturing has done so the exact purchase size was not revealed in the document but within bitcoin trading but with Bitcoin trading between 29,000 and 37,000 in January, when Tesla bought 1.5 billion, that could mean they hold around about 40,000 BTC. Now, based on these speculative figures and the Bitcoin price increasing since the end of January, Tesla's 40,000 Bitcoin minimum is now worth 1.2 billion. So they've almost added a billion dollars uh, profit from their Bitcoin in a month in a month well a little bit over a month a month and a half maybe sort of two months that is still pretty good that is unbelievable uh, kind of gains and again the scary thing is imagine if Bitcoin does get to you know sort of two hundred thousand three hundred thousand dollars imagine how much that 2.2 billion will be worth that's you know I don't even know. I'd have to get a calculator out, but they're going to be doing quite well. And it's still the same kind of gains for you and me. If you bought Bitcoin for $29,000 and it goes to $300,000, you've made the same kind of gains as them. You just, it, you, your capital was smaller. But percentage-wise, you've done exactly the same. And if you got in before them, then you've done better than the smart money. So just think about that. If you got into Bitcoin before $29,000, you're ahead of Grace, you're ahead of, sorry, uh, Tesla. Sorry, got a little bit lost there. And if you got into Bitcoin before sort of ten or $11,000, you got in there ahead of MicroStrategy and they continue to buy. So maybe the little guy is finally being able to front run this as uh, Raoul Paul has said a number of times. You know, the little guy can try and front run this. And it's still early. Again, we've gone through stories where only 5% of institutions are actually here. But as I said, trickle, trickle at first. So at first it was only a couple, like maybe 1%, 2%. Now it's gotten to 5%. Soon it'll be 20%. Then it's going to be 50%. And then it's going to be nearly 100% of all businesses are in. That is just the way it goes. That is what's coming. Will it all happen by the end of this um, cycle? You know, the peak of the cycle? Maybe. It, it, it could. That would mean, though, that we have an extended cycle, that that theory comes true. And it's a possibility, but maybe not. I get the feeling like there's going to be plenty of companies that are going to wait on the sidelines and, you know, kind of hope that they can then buy in at the bottom of the next bear cycle. I don't know if that'll work, though. Like, if Bitcoin now becomes sort of mainstream and goes on a multi-year bull run, then they will have missed that chance and they'll have to buy in at higher prices. But no one really knows if that's what's going to happen. It's just a possibility. We need to keep that in the back of our mind. All right. So May 2 or My 2, I don't know how to say it. We reported on this a little, excuse me, a little while ago. They bought $50 million worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Well, they've done it again. Here they go. They've put another $50 million worth uh, into both. Now they bought more Ethereum this time. I think last time they bought more Bitcoin and less Ethereum. This time they bought more Ethereum and less Bitcoin. So they got $100 million. Well, they've invested $100 million into cryptocurrencies, I think, at the moment. So that is, that's bullish. Like, again, how can, you know, people kind of be too phased about these pullbacks that we're having when we have big firms putting in millions of dollars and, you know, some of them billions of dollars? <laughs> that, you know... It'll be interesting to see if there's ever a company that invests, you know, like a trillion dollars into it. Um, well, actually, I'm not sure. There probably isn't any companies that could afford to invest a trillion dollars. But still, even when we uh, start, start to talk billions of dollars, that's a lot of money. All right, Blockstack. So we got some news for them. So I'm going to probably butcher this lady's name, but hopefully I get it right. Melton 
Demiroz, she is joining the Stack Foundation to bring Bitcoin beyond digital gold. And I thought this was pretty funny. So the CoinShares CSO talks about joining the Stacks Foundation board and why Bitcoin is not a rock like gold. <laughs> so uh, Demiroz is the Chief Strategy Officer at Digital Asset Investment Advisory Group CoinShares, a frequent guest on CNBC and an advisor on multiple projects such as CASA and Shift Network. She's also the newest board member for the Stacks Foundation non-profit organization that promotes development on the Stacks network, which was formerly Blockstack, a move that has been uh, in the works since early last year, but it was uh, shared exclusively with Decrypt today. So that's the, that's this network. So it sounds like Stacks might be, you know, getting some uh, new people in to kind of help guide them and mentor them and steer them in the direction right direction. I had Stacks, uh, I sold it all on I think a double or something like that. And I am getting the feeling because it sounds like Grayscale is going to start a trust up with them. I might have to go and buy them back. And unfortunately, I'm going to buy them back for a profit. But anyway, I made a profit and I invested those profits into other things, which have then made me more profits. So I can't complain. All right. This is interesting. So the French government has completed the sale of Bitcoin seized from the alleged hackers of GateHub. Now, one bidder paid for a lot of 0.11 BTC at a rate of $290,000 per, bit, per Bitcoin. So whoever bought this Bitcoin is obviously betting that Bitcoin is going to go much higher than 290000 Now, maybe not this Bitcoin bull run, but in the long run, I'm guessing they're betting because they've got a long ways to go before they can buy Bitcoin. Uh, by you know, sorry before they can sell that bitcoin at any kind of profit so my only guess is that they're going to buy it uh and hold it for a really long time but uh, yeah I, I can't understand why they would have bought it for two hundred ninety thousand. where you can just go to the market and buy it for a whole lot less there's got to be some reason behind it i just don't know exactly what it is now last but not least coinbase so they have registered 114.9 million dollars worth of shares for listing so they're getting ready to sell. Coinbase shares have changed hands at $200 to $375 in private transactions this year. All right, so I'm guessing the share price is going to come out at probably a couple of hundred dollars. I'm going to say it might even go four or $500 a share. Uh, that seems a little bit expensive at the moment, but in all fairness, it might not be. It could be very, very cheap. But like most things, I think initially when it hits the market, it'll possibly spike up and again never financial advice just my personal opinion it'll spike right up right up and then there'll be a big sell-off uh, and it'll possibly be cheaper than that but again there's no guarantee so i'm not really sure what i want to do about that because i definitely want to get some coin shares stocks uh, this is one that i'm interested in just yeah i'm unsure whether to dive in straight away or maybe just wait to see if i can buy them back cheaper later i really don't know what's going to happen there but this is one of the stocks that i'm absolutely 100% interested in, interested in, but I also need to work out whether their stock shares will fall significantly in the next bear market. I'm, I'm unsure about that because then maybe the time to buy the stocks would be at the bottom of the bear market. Uh, but yeah, not really sure. We'll have to wait and see. All right, a lot of miss, a lot of news to get through, a lot of uh, things to yeah pontificate about and sort of think about and you know make our decisions on where we see the market going are we finally going to rocket past 60,000 do we see the traditional weekend sell off and maybe again get over 60,000 by sort of Friday Saturday and then fall back under it sort of Sunday who knows love to know your thoughts down below where do you think we're going do you think we're going to be stuck around this 60k level for a little while longer and maybe even go lower or do you think we're finally ready to just break past the $60,000 mark and what price do you think we're going to go to at least in the sort of short term all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're all on that game train it's looking pretty good at the moment and i'll see you next time